I am looking forward to the I Am Become Death Destroyer of Worlds musical number that involves song and dance and maybe some tasteful nudity. And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, you know it. Whatever the hell else we come up with, I'm Vin, that's Jordan, that's Pedro, together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic. Boom. Helping us form Cocaine Voltron. What's up, lads? What's new? What's going on? We were talking about uh, right before we went live, Jordan's like, I think maybe furniture is getting moved. I'm like, yes, oh, the, man. Va- vacuuming. That's, what, that's what's going on. Oh, Shit's getting vacuumed. Right. Okay. <laughs> no doubt. A couple of new things going on. Um, I, I was just showing off on the live stream. Come watch us live on Twitch. I, I got uh, our new merch on Frank, and that was a challenge. <laughs> Fr- Frank doesn't really articulate all that well. Frank wasn't having that shit. He was fighting me the entire fucking time and fucking biting at me. And you know what? You punch Frank, he just turns him on. He starts grinding on you. So, like, there's no... There there was no way to you win. You can't win. You can't, man. You, you just dealt with it. Well, with I, it. I, I guess Frank is like layering up from now on because there's no way you're getting that shirt off of him. <laughs> that, that's his forever shirt. But if you follow, I think I might have posted it on Mastodon. I definitely posted it in our Discord. I was at a consignment shop looking around after uh, jury duty because I was on that side of town. I found that finally, finally, we were talking about it, found a uh, shouty shirt. Not really in my size, but enough to where I could get it to wrap around. That's good enough. Like, don't want to rip the back out. But I ran across something that's like super cool. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be the first ones to see it. Cutting edge technology. The Apple M3. Ah. Not even out yet. <laughs> the, totally not an Apple TV. Nope, this, yes. is, this, 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 this is what they look like. This is, this yes. is what the M3 looks like. Uh, this this I, is again, the new Asahi Linux development platform. It's a prototype. Uh, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a VGA out. <laughs> actually got HDMI. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah. And component. Okay, and, yeah, and then and, and this video, yeah. Uh, no S video. Or no S video? Uh-huh. No. Uh, it's Ooh. got uh, digital audio out on it too, which was surprising. So what is this really? Well, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the first gen Apple TV, which already had one, but I don't know where the thing was. And it was $5.99, so I have no idea if this boots. <laughs> but you know what? For it's six gonna be bucks? A, yeah. yeah, six bucks. We're going to buy it. We're going to try to put Linux on it. We'll, uh, we'll do a live stream about it. And I still got a crack. I haven't even opened it up, so I don't know what type of funkiness. I don't even know if it starts kids, because I think these things were like one gigahertz uh, Intel. Mm, yeah, Cel- Celerons. Yeah. So what, you know, what, watch there just be like a baggie of weed in there. Someone hid it away there a while ago. Oh man, that'd be great. <laughs> uh, maybe, oh yeah. Maybe, maybe there's like, I don't know, 200,000 Bitcoins on a, <laughs> yeah, on, on the little drive <laughs> they in didn't there. Yeah. The, uh, the drive. <laughs> Speaking of that, this has got, uh, unless it's been upgraded, which I doubt it has, cause this thing doesn't look like it's ever been in. It needs some cleaning. The, uh, it's got, yeah, I think it had a mechanical laptop hard drive in it. Okay. Oh, we'll find out, man. Uh, stay tuned for that. How about you, Jordan? Well, getting, getting prepared for the, the Barbenheimer tomorrow. I talked about that in the pre, pre super shows and we have, we have the game plan. We're going to do the double feature. See how that goes. I am looking forward to the, I am become death destroyer of worlds musical number that involves song and dance and maybe some tasteful nudity, but we'll, uh, we'll report back. Also, yeah, BG3 is coming out next week, and I'm just fucking vibrating. I can't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah. Uh, and maybe people tuned in and watched you on uh, Empty this Thursday. Yes. Cook our brains. <laughs> I, my, my head felt like a pressure cooker by the end of it. I swear to God. That was we, we all, almost defeated by puzzle number 18 of 25. Oh, dude, you guys are like on the on the cusp of like, all right, one more try, and we're, we're just going to quit and do this yeah and, and and then it's 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 always the thing where it's just like let me just try oh yeah oh can i just oh 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 that's the, god damn it i was yeah. i was able to do this the entire time okay <laughs> one thing i do want to i forgot to mention uh we will be testing in production i have uh my stream deck wired into the daw huh using osc with you know because it's controlling obs on this main box but it's also controlling um the daw over here through the uh raspberry pi Mainly because of that silly thing we do when we say it's the Steam Linux. You got that echo thing going on, right? I have to trigger that manually. 
So I got to reach over here and trigger that manually. But then I also got to cut back to our shot while triggering that. I run out of hands. Ah, so you're trying to trying to co-locate buttons, hit the hit the one thing right. and then does so does them both. Now I'm sure it's going to fail spectacularly. Now that I've talked it up a little bit. Oh yeah. And I had to write just a Lewis script in order to make that work. So. Yeah, just just OBS crash is completely unrelated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pedro, what's our latest car accessory for the week? Uh, it was I'd already ordered them, but they only arrived this week. It was the bezels for the fog lamps because one of those bezels was only getting held on by two clips of the six that it's supposed to have. And of course, then the color doesn't match because these are reproduction, brand new reproduction ones. And the OEM ones have a slightly less pronounced black color. It's more of a darkish gray. So slightly less black. Yeah, <laughs> 12 years of being out in the sun, black ass. Yeah, dude, authentic fix. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, no, I managed to get them in. I just needed Nori's help because I too don't have enough fingers for things. So I needed Nori to actually deck. hold. A stream deck, I mean, so. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I have, the, I have that problem too. That. I got like giant clumsy hands. So sometimes I just need like a small set of fingers to go do a thing that will take me like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, getting Nori to hold the uh, as I unclipped it from the back. No, without Jordan. Being able what you to do is you do the contortion on your bend, and you try to bend it. And you're like, come yeah. on! It's it, yeah, it's 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 the G chord on the guitar, right? Like, just like fucking twist your fingers in some ungodly fucking yeah Naruto thing. <sighs> but yes, they've been replaced. There, it it's that bit is fixed. Now it's just uh, replacing the two rear shock absorbers. But that's going to be next month when I have more money. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll finally save up enough to get the shock absorbers on the horse. No, man, I'm sitting. I'm saving up for getting the lift kit on the horse. It's <laughs> so it can bounce. It's the steam. Who you know, Gabe is also getting a lift kit. Oh man, uh, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big news, big news, regardless. But you know what? No, Valve is not announcing Half-Life 3 at Game, Game, what is it, Gamescom? I want to call it Gamescon for no reason, right? Yes. Games communication, games community, yeah, convention. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. so, Com convention. Convention. Oh, look at, look at, look at, G-Man being all sexy. <laughs> all right, so according to report, Gamescom uh, companion app confirmed that Valve is going to be one of the mini publishers attending the event next month couple of speculate you know immediately what do you go to half-life 3 confirmed ricochet 2 ricochet, ricochet 2, two. <laughs> you know you said that and uh you're like now they're going to release uh steam os to the public right, yeah. to which i was like half-life 3 is more believable than that in yeah. <laughs> I think listen i i i can i can hope i can dream otherwise i have to like use hollow iso as my desktop os and that's just miserable <laughs> oh man uh so they pretty much confirmed that they're going to be a gamescom I think the safe bet there is uh, striking. Counter Strike right? Two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it seems to be. It's the one that we've already heard about, and it's effectively yeah, Counter Strike Go with the Source Two engine. So most likely that's going to be the one that they're going to be announcing. But uh, the thing that kind of struck me about this uh, particular article was the website itself. That that X Fire name. I remember when Xfire was a like a Steam alternative client with its own no, overlay. It, it, <laughs> was, it was it wasn't a Steam client. It was uh, it was a uh, Teamspeak alternative. That was that was its yeah, selling it, point. It, 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 it was it but was it a also voice had chat the app. game overlay, and it, you could add games from Steam. You could add games that you had installed outside of Steam, and it, all yeah, that. for for you for could the, record games. Uh, I don't yeah, remember no, the X-Fire, recording stuff. It got around. <laughs> I, I just remember the text chat and the voice, but I guess I guess now it's just a game blog. Mm. Yeah. Or, yeah. So maybe that, but I mean, we always have like eternal hope, right? Uh, maybe because like what we still don't know what project Citadel is, and it's, it, like, it's the artifact spinoff. I, I, I I'm like half joking when I say this, but if we can get a retelling of Half Life One from uh, the perspective of the pet pet head girl. yeah, uh, Hetty head, Headley Lamar, yes, mm -hmm. Lamar, and like play through it like that you know how they do blue shift let's do crap yeah. shift <laughs> mm, absolutely no you, or no you, you get to play as g-man and your your whole point is just to like 
get to weird spots in like the OG Half Life level oh, geometry. Oh, it's a stealth yeah, game. Yeah, 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 it's a stealth game where you have to like. Oh, you play as one of the special infected from Left 4 Dead 2 with the climbing ability, and then you just stand and watch Freeman go by. <laughs> yeah, you, you you have to be in the right spot so that he looks at you. Like, and if mm-hmm. he goes through the level and doesn't see you, then mm-hmm. it's game over and you got to start again, right? Like, <laughs> it's like it's yeah, it's like a reverse stealth game where you're trying to be spotted. Steamworks. Yes, the new update for uh, the Steamworks monitoring or um, analytics tools are available now. Uh, if you're a Steam partner, if you've published a game, your your game on the Steam store, you have uh, access to it right now. There will be a link in the show notes for that. But yeah, they uh, we talked about it a while back that they were going to get rid of Google Analytics, and they have. Uh, one of the big updates that they wanted that people kept bringing up was the fact that uh, people couldn't really see exactly what external websites were redirecting traffic to their game, uh, and now they can. That's one of the advantages of getting rid of the old system and implementing the new one, is that they can add the new features. So it is, uh, hopefully it'll be a lot more useful for uh, developers, and people can actually see what where the traffic is coming from and tune their marketing for that. Yeah, Google yeah, Analytics is like not something you necessarily think about when you were thinking about like Steam. I'm like, but it makes sense, right? right? And like, why reinvent that wheel? Well, now we can. And uh, so this is going to be like one day conversion tracking, which is neat. That's good. You don't have to wait around and like re, you know, reticulating splines and visitor device categories. Uh, what else do we get? New returning users, geographic breakdown. And they're like, we're just getting started with this. We got some more yep. stuff coming in. And uh, I mean, I mean, the the, the big uh, the big motivation behind this was because you know Google killed their old Google Analytics, and they're like, move to the new one. And Valve's like, no. But yeah, having having the per device conversion rate is going to be really useful because you can see like where where uh, the purchases are coming from. Uh, which like again again, discovery on Steam is kind of a mixed bag because you know Valve's doing their best, but there's also like a zillion goddamn games on Steam. So having some information about like, hey, wh- what is actually generating my sales mm-hmm. gives you gives you some better idea of like, hey, where should I where should I focus my advertising dollar? Where should I focus on like talking about my game and promoting it so that like it can Val, actually reach Val, the hear me out. You need to do what YouTube finally just broke down and did. So when you log into like your developer portal, they're like, I oh, but just give us some money. <laughs> but you've already given Valve money. You've paid the hundred bucks to get on the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, uh, the store. Just, just, just give them some you know, bonus money. I'm just, uh, just, uh, just saying, you know, it's just, just a little bit, just grease wheel. Just and a little you're bit, already right? giving them thirty percent, so that 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 ought to pay for something, right? Other than the free <laughs> Lit export. I mean, like, you know what? I, at least I'm uh, kind of pleased at the balls of like YouTube. It was like, no, I'm straight up pay to win now. Come on, let's yeah. go. <laughs> F- Facebook's been doing it for years, baby. We're just, we're just catching up. Uh, I'm glad those tools are available for developers. Hopefully, they're going to be a better st- love story. I'm sure somebody's like, no. But And uh, the advantage is, uh, since they're not relying on Google anymore, they're actually in control of what data they collect. And they specifically say, we don't collect based on ace, uh, age, race, or gender. So, yeah, it's just what people get, what games. That's it. <laughs> don't don't care. I'm still going to find uh, Google. Like, I'm jumping through 17 hoops to make sure you don't get my data bits. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe, maybe Atari can use these uh, these new metrics oh, they to sell might. more games. They might, Mister Run and Jump. A couple of new games, not to be week. confused with Jumpman, though. No. Completely different. No, no, no. Uh, Pedro, this is the first Atari Linux title, right? Twenty ninth. <laughs> Those numbers are practically next to each other, man. Come on, cut me a little slack. Yeah, there's only like twenty eight numbers yeah. in between them. It's fine. Rounding error. <laughs> Rounding I mean, out. like, how many numbers are there actually, Pedro? It's it's a very small percentage. It's it's a very tiny margin of error. There's different types. It, yes, of infinity. it is infinitely small. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, what are we looking at? We're basically. I mean, for me, I looked at. We're watching the video right now. Think about a v mixed with a Celeste with just a straight up lethal dose of the glow sticks, man. Like the movement yeah. looks good for like I don't know who made this. Made this. Looks smooth as hell. I'm not going to say, uh, however, however, when we scroll down, that price is a little detached from uh, reality, <laughs> if you ask me. Coming in at a regular price of $24.99, which is uh, almost 1.2 Hollow Knights, and uh, on sale uh, for $22.49. Yeah, no, the, the, 
you need to ask yourself, Atori, is this Hollow Knight? This is anybody who's making a fuck you hard uh, <laughs> puzzle platformer says, is this Hollow Knight? And if the answer is no, you need to put it in less than fourteen ninety nine, which is Hollow Knight. So uh, you're, you're asking who made this made this. Apparently, they're, it, this is done in part by a team called Graphite Lab. They made a game called Hive Jump, which is like, apparently it's a four player like Contra like. Which has, uh, does it have online multiplayer? It does. So that might be worth it. But that's, it's also like $21. But there, I mean, the game, does, that, that other game doesn't look bad. So the pedigree here is pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very much like the, the jumping, the platforming, and the obstacle dodging. It's a mix between Celeste and um, Super Meat, Meat Boy. Boy. Yeah. Yeah. Very Meat Boy-ish in a lot of the, like the trailers, like, ooh, that, that's very Super Meat Boy. Uh, but yeah, it, it it's the vaporwave aesthetic is uh, on text. point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tasty. <laughs> I like it. I like the look of it. I look forward to picking it up in a humble bundle. But yeah, twenty four bucks for like that for, I, for an Atari game. Yeah, no hard no, sell. <laughs> hard sell. Unlike Barry Right. Arms. Uh, rightfully bury arms uh this is a uh early access uh roguelike and this um uh, and it has a little bit of a neat twist where uh in addition to the standard stuff where you can get more powerful and get more upgrades as time goes on you also have to power up your enemies as well so you get to pick out how, how strong how they get stronger and you got to match up your current loadout with their weaknesses or like if uh, or if they are like particularly strong, you have to like pick stuff that will counteract their strengths. So that's a, that's a, it's a neat little, uh, it's a neat little modifier on the formula. Um, yeah. And, uh, it, it is in, it is an early access. Uh, it's 1169 on sales, 10% off right now. So that's like not too bad. Uh, has a native Linux port. Yeah. I, mean, I don't, I, don't know. I was looking at it and I didn't look at the show notes and uh, I was like, Pedro, this reminds me of that bullet game you liked. Yes, it entered a gungeon, very yeah, much like, so. There it is in the show. Notes. All right, yep. <laughs> yeah, and a big thank you to uh, Stride PR, uh, who apparently are doing PR for Rightfully Bury Arms. They sent me a key. I don't know if they sent you guys individually a key as well. Oh, no. Um, gotta, yeah. check my, gotta check that <laughs> inbox. <laughs> gotta check the inbox. Uh, but yeah, it is, uh, it, it is very much like the way you play is very similar to Enter the Gungeon. Less reliance on the dodge rolls. Which is probably a good thing in some people's opinion. Oh, look at um, this Vulcan API. Yep, it Nothing. is the only supported one is Vulcan. And uh, if you played it when it first uh, released, there was a, a little bit of a um, issue with the Linux version, mm. which was you when you loaded in, you actually got loaded into the test debug area instead nice. of the actual first level. <laughs> you know what? That that's better than executable not found. Yep. Yes, yes, it is. Up. Which happened to me because when they sent the email, it's like, "Ooh, there's a key in the email. Neat. I'll redeem the key." And I fired it up. It's like, "I'll wait a little bit until I Stride play some more." PR, do do us a favor and put that in the headlines of like, "By the way, this one's got a key in it." Key key included in like right. square yeah. brackets. Yeah. Oh man, uh, Wrestle Quest Slim Jims. Oh man, snap! Get ready to snap into a Slim Jim. Oh, man, like pro wrestling and JRPGs, I don't. You you guys seem skeptical. I think it's a chocolate peanut butter type situation. This is WrestleQuest. It's a JRPG featuring a shit ton of classic wrestlers like our Lord and Savior Macho Man Randy Savage, Dancing Joe's best friend Jake the Snake, and Andre the Giant, Ven's drinking idol. But yeah, it's uh, uh wrestling is basically like IRL anime if 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 you like follow the storylines <laughs> and you just like pay attention to it. Uh, so I, th- I think there's like very, very much like crossover appeal for like JRPG fans and wrestling fans. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm certainly into this. I'm going to give this a look when it, uh, when it is, uh, fully available. It's coming out on August 8th, which is going to be in my prime Baldur's Gate time. So I'm going to oh, check no. this out when it goes on sale in a humble bundle, but I'm still, <laughs> I'm still going to give this a look because yeah, look, it looks dope as hell. Plus there's like Andre the Giant in it. It looks all right, but it yeah, I still don't like wrestling. That was my reason for uh, dropping support for uh, Jim Stephanie Sterling when she said it's like yeah, no, I'm using part of the Patreon funds to help with the wrestling thing. It's like nope, mm-mm. I fundamentally disagree with that. So well, you separate you, those, so and fine. I'll be your Patreon <laughs> yeah. again. It's, it's like Pedro weird line in the sand, Mateus. Yeah. That's what they call yeah. it. No, yes, yeah. no, 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 I draw no, some no, weird lines you, in the sand, but I stick to them. <laughs> so, 
but like wrestling and jrpg with wrestling and that's it there's no like no online multiplayer and like there's no like oh weird maybe there is maybe it's buried in somewhere not in the available description but yeah, it's jrpg you know it's turn-based but with wrestling and that's interesting because i want to know what the me diagram of like that overlap between jrpg fans and wrestling fans and i, I mean that because it's like everybody like People come out of nowhere and they're like stealth fans of wrestling and we'll bring up something about wrestling. Like, yeah, I'm African love wrestling. I'm like, why you've never mentioned that? We've known each other for 13 fucking years. Like, <laughs> I didn't know you were a huge wrestling fan. Interesting. I I don't I honestly think the 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 cross appeal is huge because it's like it's all just like storytelling, right? Like wrestle wrestling is like storytelling through acrobatics and fucking Make it, make it make it weird cheesy chrome. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, 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 yeah, and and our, like your average RPG plot is basically a soap opera, anyways. So yeah, I I, I think I think it works very it works very well together. It's one of those things where like you would look at it and go like really, but when you, when you scratch a bit deeper, you're like yeah, it makes perfect sense the, um, at, at least to me. However, one thing I do know about the uh, the WWF when the pandas aren't smashing each other over the head with the uh, chairs. Yes. The w, was it WWE now or something? Different? Yeah, WWE because the 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 panda sued them. The no. WWF sued them, <laughs> and that and that's why it's WWE now. <laughs> the World Wide Lo- Wildlife uh, <laughs> Federation. Um, World World El- Worldwide Wildlife Elephants. Right? Oh man, they're very litigious. <laughs> they are like we're talking like NFL American sports like broadcaster will like immediately like that level. So there's I a have... lot of um, I would say more than likeness to a lot of characters that i don't know if they're going to be able to get away they, with just they do, they, do they, they, they do have the rights like for uh for like macho man they got they got the rights for him uh for uh jake the snake like he's actually like doing promos for them so like uh and the uh, at least like i i i think the way it works now and some some actual like mark correct me if i'm wrong because i know some hate mail um they maintain that, ownership like the, of their character. Yeah, they, they, yeah, like they, they are they are independent contractors. They retain ownership of the contractor or of, of the character, and they they have they have some degree of freedom regarding that. They can like promote themselves and like appear Good. in other things. All right. Yeah, but like, I mean, oh, dude, I'm 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 listening to a podcast now. It's like a biography of Vince McMahon titled "Vince McMahon: History's Greatest Monster." And dear lord, there are, there's some shit in there. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you could really throw too much at Vince McMahon and be like, oh, no, say it ain't so, McMahon. Yeah, but yeah, th- th- this is like the deep dive of all like the and crazy shit. That is me done. knowing nothing about Vince McMahon other than the uh, three-stage meme, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, which I assume that's Vince McMahon, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. That, that, is, that is Vince McMahon, yes, absolutely. Up next, uh, yeah, no. not Star Fox, uh, Star Kitty? Star Kitty, yes. Star <laughs> Whisker Pussy. Squadron Survivor, yeah. It's the new game by Flip Fly. If you've been on Linux since the like the early days of Steam on Linux, you know Flip Fly because Race the Sun was pretty big indie game at the time, and I very much liked it, and I played a bunch of it. Um, it is I very much enjoyed, and this is their mm. new. It's not really just its own standalone game. This is like the prelude to whisker uh, whisker squadron proper which is coming in uh 2024 okay, we just gotta back that up we gotta back that up we gotta back that up well no, 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 keep going. all right so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I i'm seeing a the structural integrity of this helmet is completely shot to hell by the years oh yeah absolutely <laughs> okay but like, but like where, where, where's where's the like the headphones right like it's got like ear earmuffs on the side even though the, the ears are up here well, like a, yeah, a, a tragic point a very sensitive i would have to assume that these uh cats would be like the star fox like they're willing to sacrifice their legs no, to, no, the, well, no, because because these are cats, right? Like cats don't give fox, a fuck, huh? Yeah, <laughs> foxes are smart. Cats, they they don't give a shit. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, they describe it as a more streamlined corridor shooter with uh, roguelite survival elements featuring the same cast of feline pilots. So yeah, it is. Uh, if you liked uh, Race the Sun, this one seems to inherit quite a lot of the same flying um, maneuverability. Though the game of theirs that I really want to play is Cats Fly Helicopters, 
Yeah, that, that, that I want to play. <laughs> I'm like, you have my chaos simulator. All right. Spe- yeah, speaking speaking of vaporwave, this game is very very vaporwave, oh, yeah. and it does have a Linux demo, which is nice. Although that demo, it's kind of sparse. The long stretches of nothing, as they explain I, uh, the game mechan- yeah, mechanisms. Yeah, like right at the beginning, uh, I was about ten minutes into the hey, shoot the little uh, drone things that are flying but, by, and I'm like, you got to do something else here. It's got a point. Uh, and I do hope like later on there's a better conveyance of like speed because I felt yeah. like I was on a really dumpy ship and maybe that changes the higher levels you get, but go try the demo and, uh, mm-hmm. play around with it. It doesn't require too much. 1500 megabytes of available space and, uh, eight gigajoules of RAM. You were good to go. Yeah. Give it, give it a shot. doesn't cost you anything except for yeah. unless you're on metered bandwidth, in which case it costs you <laughs> precious, it might cost precious you a bit, bites. Yes. <laughs> Uh, but that, that's it for that's it for games. Now we get to go to the most exciting section, the news section, where we talk about drivers. Dude, drivers, <laughs> best kind of drivers, open source drivers, and not from. Uh, brace yourself, Linus. Brace yourself. Ah, <gasps> for Nvidia. Oh no, <laughs> what is this? Uh, NVK merging into the mesas, dude. This is this is like maybe not breakneck speed, maybe not breakneck speed. It was but pretty quick. <laughs> Thirteen months. I went ahead and mathed that out by like looking yeah, through I, the initial. A year. It's over. Yeah, over a year. Yeah. Uh, gang of yeah. people have been working on this. Uh, and what have they been doing? This is the open source Vulcan stack for NVIDIA hardware. I mean, it's ready to go into Mesa itself right now. Now, admittedly, it's not completely at feature parity with Rad V, which is the AMD equivalent of the Vulcan stack. But it's not, again, it's been it's been in development for a little over a year. Rad V's been right. kind of under heavy said, We, we want to get this pushed out because it's a solid <laughs> foundation. And this is the one we talked about a while back that's going to require uh, a rewrite of the Nuvo kernel API yeah. in order mm-hmm. for it to function at all. And uh, if you're wondering, like, well, what's this going to support? Because, you know, we all just immediately ran out. But, the, you know, the, they're giving away 40 series cards. Mm. Um, and we're just buying 40 90s left and right. Maybe some of you don't have them just yet. But... Uh, <laughs> What does it currently support? It's going to support Turing. That's going to get your 20 series and your 16 series and later. And it, that's pretty dope. Also, it's going to support Kepler. Eventually, they're going to get to it. That's on the roadmap. So that's your 6 series and uh, your 7 series. It's mm-hmm. basically everything that supports Vulcan, yeah. effectively. <laughs> which, which, will, which will be nice. It's like one of, the, one of the big things about the NVIDIA drivers is like after a certain point, you get like... They're just like, we're not supporting your hardware anymore. You don't get any mm-hmm. more, more features. You don't get any more things. And so you're on like these old ass versions of drivers. And it's nice to have something that like is a little more current. Yeah. And then they, again, they could... I will say like going all the way back, because I mean, 7,000 is just about to get phased out of the um, mm-hmm. regular driven. How, how many years ago was it when uh, Kepler was released? Uh, the 600 series were released in. 2014 ish? <laughs> no. no. 2015 oh, was when the 1080 came out. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So then, yeah, might have been like. Yeah, it might, it might have been like uh, oh, 2011, 2013. 2012. Ah. 12, okay. <laughs> so that's a pretty Still, good run. Yeah. Yeah. It's been 11 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it would be nice if they managed to. Even if they don't do like a complete 100% Vulcan 1.3 or whatever the version happens to be, um, just support Vulcan to some extent on older um, platforms. Well, for me, they, at least, would be for, preferable. Do, do it, do it for Pedro. <laughs> I know, and, yes. and they're, they're not quite the at Vulcan uh, 1.2 yet. Um, there's not enough features there for stuff like DXVK or Zinc or anything like that. But like again, 13 months to get like a pretty functional driver the base. Yeah. for, for mm-hmm. in, nvidia you know that 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 historically really easy to work with hardware that like doesn't rely on black boxes it writes at all. itself man like yeah right they can just hold so, it up to the light and with some tracing paper under it it's awesome. abso- absolutely yeah <laughs> but this, this it's is, really good if they can get this to functional to some degree and use zinc to do uh the open gl via vulcan and then you only need the proprietary bits for CUDA. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. You and basically uh, have parity with AMD. And yeah. they're, they're saying too, that the, uh, the new, uh, new VOAPA is almost done. Uh, they're, they're just putting some finishing touches on that. Right. So hopefully they didn't see any like, like major blockages getting that merged into the kernel. 
Yeah. So hope, hopefully by end of year, we'll have something. Yeah. Exciting times. Just in yeah. time for me to like buy an AMD card or something. What type uh, of yeah. video card do you have, Pedro? I keep forgetting an AMD. What? It's uh, an RX 6700 XT. Ah, so is that like the better than a sixty nine fifty? No, no. <laughs> you can get sixty nine fifty for cheap, man. Yeah, the sixty nine fifties dropped a lot. Thank you, Nvidia, for the forty seventy because AMD looked at that's like, wait a second, we have something that's about thirty percent faster than that in rasterization. Mm-hmm. Let's just drop the price to match the forty seventy. Oh look. <laughs> well, did you see the news um, for the uh, what? What is what is the what was like? It was called like the GR because I thought it was like really close to uh, GE AMD's uh, release uh, video card um, news because it was supposed to be only like in um, the China market, but they decided they were going to roll it out everywhere. Okay, I can't remember. Uh, there the. They usually do that with processors, and then you see those processors arrive via AliExpress and <laughs> similar websites. Seven thousand <laughs> is the latest series, right? Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, this was some, was supposed to like come in at like six hundred bucks. Somebody will mm-hmm. remember what it is, but lazy, yeah. lazy web. Yeah. There you go. Uh, That's all I got. Yeah. More 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 open source driver options are great. Because uh, yes. you can use them to watch 720p Netflix via Heroic, which has a new version out. Uh, it's uh, version 2.9.0, aka Boa Hancock, which I understand to be a One Piece character, as all of the Heroic versions are named after. Uh, but yeah, the big one here is Widevine is now available through Heroic, so you can watch your 720p Netflix on your 4K monitor, because fucking DRM on the <laughs> internet is wait a great. Minute. So, wait, wait, wait. So, I thought it was if you had that enabled, you could watch over 720p, because you can watch 720p by default in any browser on Netflix. I, I think I think on Linux they still filter out. Uh, no, I can watch that. No, on Linux you're limited to 1080p. Oh, okay, maybe is it okay? Then yeah. uh, <laughs> then then I'm I'm misremembering. Either way, you still can't watch those UHD Netflix videos uh, no, through no through Heroic. Uh, they also <laughs> added Prime Gaming integration, and that's the thing we always forget that Amazon uh, throws us free games every once in a while with with our Prime subscription. And yeah, it's they're they're not really easy to get. So now there's a this convenient way for you to fetch them through Heroic. Um, and there's uh, uh, the uh, game pages also now have uh, Proton and Steam Deck compatibility right in the game page. Again, saves you installing a plugin and also just nice to have. Come especially on, let's get Heroic Games launcher on Steam. Can we? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, they're, 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 they're working uh, on what like, they Steam fixed. Deck integration. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what they fixed with the uh, one of the fixes. The specific Linux one is uh, using Steam runtime inside the uh, the flat pack actually works now, which is very good. Which is very good because if you're deploying. Um, heroic for the Steam Deck, you're just gonna go to Discover and download the flat pack, so that's very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside of the Steam Deck, can we just get rid of flat packs and snaps, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> the canonical would like a word with you. Right, man. I, just, just, just the deprogramming of like, hey, I've downloaded the uh, Outdoor flat pack, and I'm like, Outdoor doesn't have flat pack. Yes, Hot, it's right here on Flat Hub. I'm like, Outdoor didn't make that, buddy. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> See, the, 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 like, they, they do need some like fucking verification system on Flat Hub because it's like, oh, yeah, Microsoft <laughs> Word on Flat Hub. Yeah, it, is. it just opens up a, a link to fucking Firefox and opens up Office 365. Like, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bunch of this shit. And like uh the oh the uh the, the flat hub app for Authy as well. Which, you know, fair, it just depacks the uh the the snap package and repackages it as a um as a flat pack, but like again, it's sketch. It, it's always sketch and like I want to add plugins to my OBS. You can't. Why flat pack? I want to add them to my DAW. You can't. Why flat pack? <laughs> and I'm yeah. not picking up it's containerization. Containerized desktop apps. <laughs> But you, you just like have a, have a have a folder with all the plugins. I I don't fucking know. Uh, <laughs> like I, I, I whatever. You well, can give, and most flat packs do already have access to uh, subfolders. So you just specify if you want to add your things to the flat pack, just dump them in this specific path. Podman unshare, baby. <laughs> Podman unshare. Flat seal lets you. It gives you a really nice GUI to set the permissions on flat, flat seal. Pack. What's that? I just want to use my dog. I could use another program. <laughs> I spent all weekend trying to figure out how to get this flat pack thing working. Jeez, Pedro, come on. (laughs) 
Yeah, you already got flat packs working, so now just install flat steel. <laughs> They're done. <laughs> so, it's easy. Just use the program for your program. And mm-hmm. these games. Yeah, yeah just, just use your package <laughs> That's manager. The it's real fine. Windows mentality, where you have to install about 30 uh, third party applications oh, to get no, your no, operating shut, system shut up working Windows properly. development environment. Jordan, you know the superior <laughs> way, and it's to build it from source, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How far down that track did you go? Because I saw you. I, I came in late to that conversation of Jordan's like, holy hell, Adwar's got so many cool shit dependencies. I, 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 well, like, so, like, immediately when, like, I, I, I think I'm like, God damn, Adwar has, like, so many dependencies. And then you're like, Here, here's the Ubuntu ones. I'm like, the minute you send the link, like, oh, that's the last of them. Oh. It's like really, really awful timing. And again, it gives you, like, the one at a time at a time at a mm-hmm. time. And it's like. Waff, baby. Waff. Yeah, wow. Can can you just like tell me all the all the packages that are missing, please and thank you, so that I can I can just get them all in one instead of playing. And did the you throw the correct compiler flag so it didn't build a debug version? No. Then you're running a debug version. <laughs> Whatever. I don't fucking care. <laughs> Open world. Just oh, don't open journal CTL in that machine that it's running. <laughs> I, I just, it's you, spitting out tons it, of things. It, it's only using about twenty percent more resources than it needs to. <laughs> Whatever. It's it's its own fucking computer. This laptop sits here and runs our door. That's Honey all. Badger, that don't give does. a damn. Understood. Check. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, well, a project that was originally written in Dlang, uh, in mm-hmm. Ogre, strangely. Yeah, enough. Ogre three D originally. Not anymore. Uh, now it's OpenMW. We've been talking about OpenMW for years now. Wait, is this thing seriously uh, called Lysol, or is it like... <laughs> apparently, it's uh, the, their internet no. name that they decided to go with. Okay. <laughs> it, 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 it kills 99% of bacteria, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, this one, uh, it basically comes with a lot of fixes for uh, distant rendering, proper res- distant rendering. A uh, very clever person. Uh, let's see if I can figure find their name here. Uh, was a bear uh, figured out that if they did the Z buffer in reverse instead of starting uh, zero with the closest objects and one as the far away objects, basically reverse those values, uh, you could get much uh, more accurate rendering for distant objects and a lot less Z fighting uh, while still maintaining the accurate rendering in proximity this is what i've been waiting on to start playing fog <laughs> the fog has already uh, has always been there what they've introduced with this new version is that the uh distant clipping head? is a lot smoother uh and it's instead of being a square around you so that if you were to turn diagonally you could see things at a farther distance than you could directly in front of you They've actually Wait, made what, it a what, circle. What's this now. Yoda thing? <laughs> I don't know, dude. One Listen, hour of silence hour. occasionally broken by Lego Yoda. <laughs> well, well, welcome back to Linux Yoda cast. I'm going to be busy, so you guys, you guys yeah. got this. Um. Yeah, we, we're, we're <laughs> yeah. just going to watch that. And uh, rain now causes ripples uh, in the water, like the original Morrowind did. Uh, it was one of the things Ooh, that was still missing from the uh, what vanilla does that OpenMW did not, and they have soft particle rendering, they have uh, reworked a lot of the animations. There's a lot of stuff on this release, and if you've been playing with OpenMW, give this one a try. You'll probably enjoy it very much. Is and there, yes, they is... included the physics uh, fix, because all of the floating point uh, operations are now double precision instead of single precision, so it's compatible with a lot more mods now. Which is good. So <laughs> what's what's left on the shopping block? Blo- the shopping block on the chopping block for OpenMW because like the game is completable now. I guess mm-hmm. I guess they're working on like main- getting like all the graphical features up to snuff and, and- making them better. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they, they, they they want to effectively fix as many of the little quirks. They still they're that's what they're still doing is implementing those quirks and then having a way for you to turn them on and off as your preference, like a tick box. Pedro, so, I'd like to think that, uh, what if I'm a modding enthusiast and I want to do that? Well, uh, they have the open, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, what's it called? Open MWCS. There it is. Uh, <laughs> screen, I, do, Ken, I mean, <laughs> no, that's the open MW launcher. That, that one is, uh, that's what you get when you install open MW. Uh, after you go through the wizard to find where your data files are. Uh, the, the introduction of a data directory and BSA archive configuration directly in the launcher. No more do you need to open the OpenMW config and register mm-hmm. archives for it to work. Yeah, the, if, you're just, if you just want to load a, a mod, 
you can just use the launcher now. If you want to make a mod, they, uh, they've also uh, had some updates for OpenMWCS. So, seriously, go have a look. If you like Morrowind about as much as I do, you should absolutely go have a look. I'd, r- I'd rather play not World of Warcraft. Thank you very much. Jordan, what was, what was your experience like the Elder Scroll? Like, I have been the one, like, I, I jumped into uh, Skyrim, and I jumped out of Skyrim, and I've, I've been good. I uh, played a bit of Oblivion. I never got too far uh, in that one, uh, but uh, then I played Skyrim. Yeah, I never, I never went back and played Morrowind. Um, although, although maybe, maybe I might once uh, OpenMW finishes all their pretty, pretty graphic stuff, and I don't. Yeah. No, what everyone's waiting for is when we get the open Skyrim with multiplayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I I look forward to that in 2050. Yes. <laughs> And because tell- TSMP does work with OpenMW, but you're still playing Morrowind. It's mm-hmm. multiplayer, but it's Morrowind. Yeah. So we 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 need we need Skyrowind. We need like the we need the demake of of Skyrim to Morrowind, and then we can <laughs> then we can do the multiplayer. Well, maybe if you're just dying for that battle between orcs and humans. Yeah, I can I can play it in my browser. This is Anyon Online. It's available through GitHub. Links to all this stuff is in our show notes, as we should have mentioned earlier. Uh, and it is a browser-based team PvP MMO where you are orcs or you are humans, and then you battle for supremacy. Pr- bleh, 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 supremacy. That's that's the word I can English. Um, gives me a bit of like Roblox meets World of Warcraft vibes. You can get this up and running by uh, it's it's all browser-based, so you need to run the server locally. But that just then you point your uh, browser at the uh, local host, whatever, and you can get in the game, and you can be an orc or a human and begin the battle. Uh, maybe it's like. The- color palette that they use for that particular screenshot that they have there but it gives me some lego vibes this is just like a lego wow type of situation <laughs> i mean i i can see that man uh it, depending on like i'd like to see some video kudos for doing the screenshot uh, but also let's, let's throw some video in here i was like all right you know what let's play around with this all the npm is nope um See, this is this is why you need a Docker container, so you can just pull the Docker thing, run it, and point your browser at it. Easy. Piece. I'll give and I'll give npm one thing: is that uh, you can to install all of the um, dependencies. All of the you packages? just pointed at, at the requirements. Uh-huh. Yes, you could just install all of them. <laughs> It'll save you some time. <laughs> but yeah, the you just point uh, the install script at the requirements, and it downloads all of them. But then you can do the reverse for an uninstall script. Which is very nice. That's very good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you just you just rm rf node modules, but yeah, sure. Um, that that that's that's the uninstall. But no, it's uh, it's it's good to see. Uh, that Wait a minute, are... if that's the uninstall, why do they have an uninstall command in npm then? Um, to to make it so that you don't have to run rm yourself. I don't know. I'm just asking questions. I I, I avoid like npm's like I want to install maybe the it's for shit Windows. To play games. Because on Linux, that's not really a concern because there's no registry to worry about. But on Windows, I, I mean, there's M- a registry. And <laughs> M- 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 PM doesn't do that. It all just downloads it, downloads it to a local folder. So maybe the install like sticks it in a system directory and then install deletes it from that system directory. But it all just runs out of node modules. Yeah. <sighs> Have, ugh, now, now I'm in work mode. God damn it. Come on, man. Let's go install Podman. <laughs> <laughs> I've, it's too late. I've I've already done it. But maybe I can use it to run a face recognition app. No, I just need you to put that face in the hole. We can verify your age. Then we can let you run NPM and play this uh, MMORPG. <laughs> yeah, just put your face in the hole to verify my age. Yeah, sure. Why not? The ESRB wants to start using. You guessed it. Everyone, the new hotness that everyone wants is facial scanning technology to check people's age. <laughs> okay. And see, when you put it, it tears apart your face and turns it into numbers because that, that's... Oh, it's going to Thanos you. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel, feel so good, right. <laughs> yeah. right. So, I mean, you know, for your kid wants to play a game, you blink and your kid's gone. You're like, what the hell, man? Uh, so, yeah. Bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. However, this ain't going to stop kids from playing a game. Here's my oh. take on this. Here's my take on this. Um, so it's important to note that none of this is proposed as a replacement for your current systems. What? What? Like anybody's going to check kids' ID? Uh, 
this yes. is a- that is effectively what they're doing. <laughs> yes, uh, this will be for people who don't have photo ID. Stick your face in the hole. Uh, <laughs> n- no, no, no. <laughs> Being the uh, you know, just for discussion topic, I had to think about this. Why would you not want to have to like verify your face in a hole in order to buy a video game, especially young kids? Well, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing though, because we got to think about like how many facial recognition systems have you read about being deployed and being horribly inaccurate and uh they're only gonna get better they're gonna get more widespread so like giving your children your young kids direct motivation to learn the exceptionally easy task of cracking facial recognition is probably a good idea it's like uh you know taking away your kids internet after 9 p.m but making sure you have web enabled on one router (laughs) <laughs> go on yeah. figure it out yeah <laughs> and, and, and like all, all, all of this like facial recognition shit is basically phrenology and i'm glad it's making a comeback although maybe it's my deviant skull shape that's that has something to do with it yeah like the, the all, all, all the all the facial recognition tech stuff like like this this is the, what they're trying to do is like automate parents out of doing their fucking jobs, raising their kids, not buying your four year old GTA. That's, that's because clearly it. parents don't want to do their job. All they do is sue uh, the publishers, you know, the people who fund the SRB. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, no, th- this type of invasive bullshit, because it's what it is, is being sold as, uh, oh, won't you please think of the children and their ability to buy violent video games? Uh, you're collecting children's faces and sending it to your server. I like how dark that sounds. That's wow. creepy as shit. I collect the children's <laughs> faces. Out of my fridge <laughs> right. and into um, my car. Now, to be perfectly clear, the ESRB, this is a proposal, like any images and data used for this process will never be stored. Wink, we promise. Sure. Or used. Right. Or used for AI training, wink, wink, don't mm-hmm. worry, and uh, <laughs> or used for marketing, because we would never do that. Or, you know what, we're not even going to share it with anybody, and that's what the ESRB said in the statement. All this is going to do is make double super sure that you're over the age of 25. Motherfucker, I know some people that are in their 50s that look 18-ish. Yeah, yeah like, I can shave, the, the, and uh, any face detection currently available says that I'm I, 18. I used to work. <laughs> I used to work at a fucking convenience store oh, yeah, selling did, cigarettes. Right? Like you, you have to card people because some you you don't know you can't tell just by looking at some people. You you just fucking can't. But how else am I going to collect the faces? Yeah, uh, with a scalpel. How else am I going to f- create our own Listen, little thing for? You have face. to corner them in dark alleys <laughs> at night, just like the fucking rest of us, and carve their faces off. I mean, so dude, you can like keep I'm it in your freezer and as a bag. Currently listening to Son of a Witch right now. <laughs> it's like that's one of the problems they're experiencing. Oz, like a bunch of bodies with the faces cut off. Oh, oh man, yeah, it's, this this is like a, a new level of identity theft. Just they're just like doing full on face removal. My face is my password. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what, 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 uh, like what were the is, assassins called in uh, Game of Thrones that uh, are the, the faceless men? Yeah, the, the faceless, faceless men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, uh, again, biometric security is great. All it does is encourage people to chop off your hands and rip out your eyeballs to defeat it. Right. Like. Mm-hmm. So, what is a good solution to this? Because uh, I know growing up, and then we're probably talking like 1993, 94, 95, in those eras, uh, we had Peggy. Yeah, and we st- we still we still have the we still have the ESRB. And then the ESRB. Uh, I never once, because I remember um, being asked this, because my mom was aware of like, oh look, it's mature. That's like whatever. And she was like, do you need me to go and go to the store with you to get Mortal Kombat too? Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> See, we went to Mortal went and bought Mortal Kombat too when I was like twelve. My mom was religiously adherent to the ESRB shit. I had to get a job so I could buy my own M-rated games. That was. That was my way around. Oh, so you could like sneak it. And- <laughs> well, yeah, it's just like, well, I, I, well, no, no longer do all my purchases have to like be filtered through, mo- through mother nearest, yeah, right? That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was one of the driving <laughs> forces behind me buying my first voodoo card. I'm like, yeah, all right, because I wasn't allowed to touch the PC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I, I again, I think, I think the real solution here is for like parents to play an active role in their child's life and like curate the content that they consume. Yes, actually educate your children. Don't just sue the companies. Educate your children as well. But but but, but like there, there there's also but like on 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 the flip side though, games with like gambling mechanics and stuff 
I don't know because yeah. this shit is predatory by design and they, they want like as much as they say they don't want it. They really do want little Billy to steal mama's credit card and buy about $5,000 of microtransactions. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, when you get into things like that, you know, like, uh, yeah, you, you think about something like maybe on the uh, innocuous, uh, like, what about like Diablo floor four? You want to think about that? That's straight gambling, man. Like mm -hmm. that yeah. is the game's DNA to give you that reward. Yeah. Like, so it's so, constantly pulling slot machines. So like there, there, there needs to be some system in place to like better, better filter this out. But like also the fucking gaming company shouldn't be making these products and then that that are that are being exposed to children maybe there should be some sort of restriction there but the, uh, but that's the whole point of the esrb we're regulating ourselves so that you don't have to make any laws mm -hmm. right well, well we'll take care of ourselves and we'll it's fine baby don't worry about it it's like the, the no 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 need for government uh, uh intervention we have our own regulatory body it's the esrb and then we, this invest, shit happens so we've invested against this, ourselves like we clearly identified that the current system, no one's enforcing that. The fuck makes you think anybody's going to start enforcing this? Well, the robots ever... are doing it. That's oh. how. Yeah, That's how. how. They're just going to have a little uh, snippet of source code. It's like, load that into your game. And then it's automated. It's like, shit. <laughs> I don't know. See, I, if I knew that was in the game, like the game would come up, I'd be doing meat spin. See, what we, what, see, I, I, I think, I think we're, have like a little hat and some glass, you know, I, I, I think we're lacking an expert opinion on this. I think we need to get Nicholas Cage and John Travolta on the podcast so they can discuss Face the, fi the, yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 the finer points of facial recognition. I don't know. Every time you hear about facial recognition, you come to find out like, oh, it's completely inaccurate. Oh yeah. It's like, or, or, or like the, the, the HP one that just couldn't identify black people mm -hmm. like straight up. Yeah. Or uh, that one that you put some glasses on and you could literally bypass every single face. It didn't even bother. It's like the moment it detected glasses just said, ah, it's you with glasses. Okay. My my wife's kid <laughs> is similar enough face-wise that his face works on her phone on lock on iPhone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and that's, you know, Apple, you know, that, the, the people yeah. with a lot of money to throw around. And, yeah. and, and that's just straight up <laughs> genetics, too. That's not even like trying to spoof it. That is just like... This is the same genetic material that made this face. Mm. Yeah, like it just—it's just defeated. So, like, I, don't know. I yeah, I. And, and how many studies have been done now that if like kids uh, games don't make people violent? No, it's, stupid it's, it's, shit it's, like it, this makes people not violent. Media. It's not the media. <laughs> yeah, nature. I mean, it's, yeah. It's, it, <laughs> I, I grew up playing Quake, and I turned out quad damage. <laughs> M -m -m Multi kill, monster kill. <laughs> um holy shit i don't know i i then again if you grew up playing like smash bros I'd be, you might want to just keep some distance from that person yeah the, like honestly like the happy-go-lucky games tend to like generate more rage than like the fucking serious ones that's kind of that's kind of it like i've watched you can, you can get a smash and i'm like i've like I, <laughs> yeah. i've been in land parties like playing some drawn out like unreal tournament back in the days like it was nothing like that Dude, you, you you can you can get straight up stabbed over a game of Mario Party, right? Like that shit that shit gets wild. <laughs> it's a good time. Maybe And here I am being very happy at playing Dark Souls. <laughs> you know what, Pedro? You bring that up uh FromSoft? They make the Dark Souls, right? Yes. Okay. Their new game, the uh Armored Core? Armored Ri Core six. Rise of the Rubicon or Fires of the Rubicon. Something like Fire that. Fires of the Rubin sandwich. Yes. All right. Paul Rubin's video game um, <laughs> looks pretty f playable, considering it's from Soft. My dude, uh, looks... yeah, it's not Dark Souls. <laughs> it's oh, dude, Armored Core. <laughs> I, I, I would at least try Pee Wee Dark Souls. That shit would be hilarious. If, if 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 it's like Dark Souls combat, but it's all like Pee Wee's big adventure shit instead of like Grim Dark. I don't know. I just want to play a, like a, a good mech game like once in my life, and quit trying to pretend Mech Warrior Two was all that great because it wasn't. We just didn't know better at the time. Mm. I played, oh, yeah, I played and, it on the Saturn. It was pretty good. <laughs> so, 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 just, 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 to, just the tangent. This, where do you, where do you fall on like the the mech combat? Do you want like the sort of like tank experience, or do you want more of an arcadey sort of like run around and shoot shit? Okay, to like fully enjoy it. Like even when I was playing Mech Warrior Two back in the day, I typically first I would always try to get like in you know a big jumbo mech, like one of the grizzly bear type looking motherfuckers, and then I would get lost trying to juggle heat management and all that, mm -hmm. and then I'd just jump into an M suit and like fly around and get swatted however 
if I was to play, I would like to play a big tank one, but I would want the uh, Steel Battalion times two controllers mm. for simulation with the VR and all that I could get into. But if I'm playing with a controller and I'm having fun in an arcade, I want like Strike Suit Zero type that, but you know, uh, mm-hmm. just taken you, to you, an insane you, you, level. You want you want you want basically just want like a platinum game with like yeah. Plots. You you want you want the Transformers Platinum game? That's right, that's, right. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that. the one that's no longer for sale. <laughs> that's where I'm at with like the big plotting mechs, like all sound fun and all that. But yeah, I, I want like a big actiony. Yeah, that, yeah that, no, those the, my, the Armored Core has been since Armored Core Four uh, up to three. It was very slow, very deliberate Mech Warrior style. But from yeah, four onwards was a lot more fast paced. Like how do they do I'm, the uh, bonfires in Armored Core? <laughs> They don't. Uh, you play a mission. It's a fairly linear mission, and you're done. Then you go back to the garage. <laughs> the, the, that was the thing. The, uh, honestly, the complexity was kind of the thing that turned me off of battle tech as well. Because like normally I'm into like big tactical shit, but like all the heat management and like oh, there's a bunch of these damage zones. It's, like, it's too much. It's too much stuff. See, I, I wouldn't mind that if I had like dis- physical displays around me for I could like flip switches and like yeah, while, maybe, while I was trying to you know get something in my reticule while trying to steer my legs and all that. Like I need. Like the same reason I have these control surfaces over here for that mm-hmm. exact same reason where I'd have these tactile controls I can hit. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just for like arcade funny thing, like where's my sword? Just wreck it and dodge. And yeah, that's, I might try our armored core. I'll play it before I play the new Tekken game. <laughs> I, I, I used to like Tekken from like Tekken two up to Tekken five. And then it's like, Oh, this is just more of the same. Okay, I didn't, okay. I would watch people play cause they had the uh, Tekken like four player or, I mean, it was however it was on the flat panel TV, which was like rear projection at the time. And I would stop and watch people play because one of them was like a dinosaur, man. I'm like, all right, shit, what's going on here? Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that, that there's the dinosaur. It. There's the, the bear. There's, there's the there's the um, wood man robot thing. Yeah, uh, there, there, the there, haunted, there is uh, wood person. <laughs> there is Bob, the fastest fat man in history. Yep. <laughs> but there's there's no Daytona USA car to fight. No, that's Not Fighters yet. Mega Mix. That that was a Sega thing. <laughs> <laughs> or the, 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 that's Mugen. <laughs> yeah, right. you can have anything in Mugen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, what was uh what was the throwdown? I forget what it was. It was like Robocop versus um somebody else. I, I was thinking about that earlier this week and somebody brought up Mugen. I'm like, yeah, you could probably do it in uh I, mean, I couldn't figure out who would win the battle. Anyway. If you could figure out who could win the battle, maybe you could write into the show. Oh, oh yes. There are many ways you can write into the show. You can use snail mail, good luck figuring out the address. Uh you can leave us a comment Pedro on just YouTube. Gets a letter. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a sternly worded letter. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can send us a comment on Patreon if you're one of our patrons. You can leave us a comment there. Absolutely, get priority on that one. But the best way to get in touch, you go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button that's on the nav bar. You fill out the form. There are some, you know, some warnings, some caveats you got to hey, read warning. at the top. We've been over this. Singular. Yes, uh, singular warning. <laughs> That'd be singular don't warnings. <laughs> Pedro's not happy unless there's like four warnings on some shit. He's like, oh, it's kind of like not really my thing. Can we get some more warnings on that? And I'm like, no. It, 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 I it'll mean, make technically, a directory in your home uh, folder, though. both uh, that one and the one above it are warnings, but you know, whatever. Uh, the yeah, the, the form you gotta fill and pick the topic if you want to send some hate mail to this show. Pick LGC Weekly if you want to send some more constructive feedback for Ven and Jill on Wednesdays. Just pick LWDW. Ask Jordan for relationship advice. He seems to be doing pretty well. So, so right. gentlemen, we <laughs> asked last week after we were in some weird sidetrack. Uh, how do people get into Linux? Like, what was your experience coming to Linux? You know, if you've been using Linux, you started like a week before last. You're like, here's my experience, or You've been using Linux for a couple of years, and you're like, hmm, I, I vaguely remember how I started, and I got into Linux, and what, what your experience was like. Cliff took us up on the challenge, didn't he? Yes. Cliff says, mm-hmm. I've been listening to your show ever since the world ended in 2020. Love what you guys do. Seven or so years ago, I was replacing a hard drive in my desktop, and I realized I, longer, I no longer had the registration key to make my Windows USB to work. I thought this was ridiculous since I paid $200 for an OS. At that moment, I moved to Linux, Ubuntu 16 or something. I will admit, my first three to five months, I must have had to write, wipe my disk and reinstall because I was pushing commands in terminal I probably shouldn't. 
and sometimes <laughs> lost graphic screen, keyboard, mouse, etc. But I took every failure as a learning attempt and still have a journal of the step-by-step how to get Linux working instructions I wrote out that included app installs and wine configs. Today, I jump around with different distros and desktops depending on use, but my main machine is a 2012 MacBook Pro running KDE, and I love it. I've been... I've been helping keep older laptops out of the trash, cleaning them up, installing Linux, and giving them to friends and family to help even help reduce e-waste. Anyways, thanks for guys for giving me this weekly entertainment. Why would you yeah, subject I, yourself to that? <laughs> he didn't say it wasn't like some perverse, twisted, dark side of his brain. Self-flagellation. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I, I, I had like a similar introduction where like, the thing that finally got me to install Linux was like, I had a second computer, but no Windows key. So I'm like, mm. oh, right, you know, I, I can I can install an operating system on here and use it as a computer. And yeah, then it's then like, as Ven often describes, you know, the Windows user colliding with Linux. You're like, this is different. I don't I don't, I don't know. Where, where, where is shit? Where, where are my drivers? I mean, you know, that the, the, it's a real thing you got to deal with, right? Yeah, and the the gripes it seems to be the uh, the bulk of the people who come from Windows to Linux is like Windows did something stupid that I didn't like, so here I am. Well, you, I, you're I too missing was in a couple situation. of steps there, Peter Matthias. It's like I don't like it, then I'm going to scream about it on social media. No, I, well, I, I there are like some it. people scream about it on social around. media. Others, <laughs> others I'm, will I'm, actually go. Okay, alternative operating systems. Download a bunch of them, which is what I did at the time. There, 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 there is that brief period before that, though, where you try to find the solution on Windows, like, oh, there must be an app or like some registry config mm -hmm. or something or other that will do. And then you set it up. And you're like, this is awful. This isn't. I got what I wanted. But at what cost? At what cost? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So how many people now I had a completely different take on um, and this is a sign of the times. Get off my lawn. No, no, no. You know, the host feel. Um, when I first started playing around with Linux, it's like 94, 95, I had dial-up, had bad dial-up too. This wasn't like good dial-up. I wasn't doing 56K handshakes or 53K handshakes. I wasn't doing 28. If I got lucky, I'd get a 14-ish handshake, which meant in our hard drives, dude, they weren't a gig. They were like five, 600 megs. Mm -hmm. So... You really are going to spend a week downloading all of your Slackware disks, all 24 of them. You're going to be very careful with them. Hopefully nothing ever happens. And then you're going to download programs. After you get your Linux box set up, you're going to download some programs to it. They might take overnight, whatever. You get a collection. You don't have a way to back this up either because you don't have spare hard drives. Hard drives, six, 700 pounds a piece, man. What do you do? You get really, really good at fixing your system because you can't spend another month trying to rebuild it. So it was a different way of approaching Linux that I still have today of the idea of nuke and pave. I'm like, why would we do that? Which nowadays is faster. It's completely, <laughs> yeah. I, I can just go grab a thumb drive with a net installed Debian and I get the system yeah, back in 20 minutes. Or, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like the, the do downloading the install media is like faster, is like slower yeah. than the actual install at times, right? Like it, it would take it, me longer to write a DVD yes. than it would just to do a net install these days. <laughs> Significantly. <laughs> but like, it's it's still good to know how to like fix it without the nuke and pave thing. Like, is, is especially especially in enterprise, nuke and pave is oftentimes like people's solution. It's like, no, you don't need you don't need to do this. There's but, like, but, but Jordan, you told me to install containers. I just go boop, it goes away. <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that, that is intentional nuke and pave, but there is persistence there. Um, and volumes, persistent flares, databases, all that crap. Um, no, it's, 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 good, it's good to hear. Um, it's good to hear how uh, more people get involved with Linux. I think, like, really demystifying the process is going to, like, help. Like, but do you think, with, I mean, there has to be, like, some balance between, like, you know, this, this was, like, you know, the supervillain, you know, origin story here is, like, mm. my... Windows 7, I lost my Windows 7 key or whatever it was. And like, no, Martha. And, you know, then I went to the Linux side. But there's, uh, get to be like, and, I, Linus, I, and Linus was like, how do you know that name? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, man. Uh, then there's this extra curiosity. Like, I, Windows 95 had just come out and I played with it for like a minute. I was really happy with DOS. I was using DOS was my first initial computing experience and i was like i don't know maybe i want to learn how this linux thing works 
And really what I wanted to do, I remember as a kid seeing uh, screenshots of NASA stations when they were doing shuttle launches. And I'm like, I want whatever that is. My mom's like, that's Unix. I'm like, oh, can I, can I get a Unix? And <laughs> then they were talking about Unix in Wayne's World because they had like the Unix book. Yep. And I was like, I got to try this Unix thing. My mom's like, you can't get Unix. And then when Linux came, my mom's like, all right, we'll get Slackware. And she showed me how to get that set up. And, uh, but it was just all curiosity, curiosity driven. It wasn't a, there wasn't for, that defining, like, oh, I'm upset. For, for, for me, for me, Cap Captain Cisco, it was, it was Cap those IBM commercials IBM? with Avery Brooks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Something, something about them stuck Linux in my brain. And because Captain Cisco said it, it didn't leave. North Ranger's yeah, got a good one. It's a Unix system. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> Run, running FSV, which then, like, as an adult, you learn is like an actual piece of software SGI, that you can use. Baby. I yeah. uh, and, <laughs> and there's a Linux version where you can browse your file system in 3D yes. now. It's a main team project. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like the Doom version of it better. Oh, right. P Doom, P yeah. PS Doom, Doom yeah. mm -hmm. or, or uh, Cube Doom, <laughs> if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, for me, it was very much an anger situation. I was using Windows XP and literally getting on the university Wi-Fi was a recipe for someone dumping something on your machine because there were some people who thought they were really clever and really annoying and kept dumping malware on people's Didn't machines. Like competition? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So I I basically started looking at literally anything that I could replace Windows with, and I attempted, uh, before trying Linux, I even attempted the Hackintosh way. Mm, but I the, thought about that oh, once or twice. You, but, uh, you, you know what? You know what? People who have done the Hackintosh thing, send us some hate mail. Yes. I want to hear your horror stories. <laughs> uh, I can tell you mine uh, really quickly, which was basically... I got everything to work on that laptop except proper 3D acceleration. I had 2D acceleration working, but 3D acceleration, not happening. So games, not happening. And I like video games. Mm -hmm. I like video games a lot. So yeah. what's the next no. best thing? I looked, uh, I looked at this, I saw someone had written like a little blog post on how to install Fedora Core 4 on that very same laptop and get everything wi-fi the little wi-fi switch in the front with the leds and everything get all of that working it's like eh, let's no, try Pedro, that Pedro, you just <laughs> didn't you, you didn't have a no <laughs> mac m3 like i got see this thing can game for days it was an acer aspire 1692 with I, uh mobility radeon x 700 <laughs> I don't know what's up with my brain, but I keep reading that M as an upside down W, and I can't unsee it. I mean, it technically no, this is, is the Apple Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Uh, Again, it's a prototype, so we got to be careful with it. Gross. <laughs> we're not, not going to top that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get the fuck. We got to talk about the plugs. We got to talk. We got to thank. Uh, we got to thank all the people who are supporting this oh, nonsense. Shit, yeah. uh, heading on uh, the people, especially who head on over to patreoncom slash Gamecast. Sign up. Get into our Discord channel where we are the other six days of the week, chatting, playing games. Then does Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays. I guess I'm doing Baldur's Gate. Uh, if you want to jump in for a co-op for that, if you feel like paying eighty bucks and being being the death of gaming, as Arthurin says. Uh, and, and joining in, uh, I'll be, I think I'm going to be doing it early on Thursday. I might start at like four in the afternoon, Eastern time. There, uh, it's probably going to take me like an hour to get through character creation. So I, I want to, I want to get some time in there. Uh, but yeah, uh, we, uh, yeah, Trek Mania on Friday, uh, sub to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Gamecast. You can also get into discord through that. We got a store, store.linksgamecast.com, buy the merch, wear a t-shirt. Uh, Frank is our excellent model here. Look how beautiful he is. Heroin is chic. Behold, you, you too can port, uh, espound the commands of Big Blue. Uh, we got Wish Zones as well. If you head over to linuxgamecast.com, click the support page. It's all nicely organized for you. It's in one big old link. It's nice and good. We got the affiliate links. Buy some stuff. If you buy Venn some stuff, you get your name and lights. If you buy any of us stuff, you can send us a note. We'll read it for you live. Uh... Is that, is that is that it? We yeah, oh yeah, we gotta I think was, uh, Don. Look. Yeah, Don Norse Ranger. Thank you for subscribing on Twitch. Remember, if you were a Twitch sub, you can also join our uh, Discord. Yeah, join. I was gonna be like, hey, go go click on our support thing. Check that out. We're cool. But, yeah, good, good <laughs> stuff. Um, everything is listed there. We do thank each and every, especially all of our patrons, making this possible. 
Come check us out. We do this live. Listen to it after the fact. Supporting what we do. Do a show on Wednesdays, too, if you want to listen to that. Weekly, daily Wednesdays. And I'm going to try to do a couple of live streams when we uh, tear apart this uh, Apple Ooh prototype. You. <laughs> it's going to be Ooh amazing. <laughs> Ugh, astounding. Yay. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, let's bounce out of here. But before we do that, let's roll the credits. Speaking of the people, that's the wrong song. <laughs> That's Wednesday, Speaking motherfuckers. Speaking of people <laughs> who make this show possible. Uh, but before we do that, if you want to get in touch with us, though, Mastodon, uh, we're all there. I need to add Mastodon things to all of our uh, social media things, but we're mass.linuxteamcast.com because I've been asked that a couple of times over the past week. That's where yes. we're at. That's where we're hanging out. I'm still Vin Stone on Twitter. I'm at Vin on Mastodon. And of course, just at Vin in our IRC chat, which is linked to our Twitch chat. And uh, you see me in our Discord chat if you're at our Discord. So, yeah, there we go. Jordan? I'm Jordan. You can find me on Mastodon at mastodonlinuxgamecast.com. I'm at Frojo. I'm at X. Go and give it to you at the Burning Fool on, on that shit and twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And I am most certainly not the Unicorn Wizard, but you can find me at unaccounted for F O U R on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and unaccounted for uh, uh, the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. <laughs> you have to no. do the Ginyu co- pose when you say X, though. Otherwise, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was talk of wrestling earlier. What was the Degeneration X? Yeah. They had the. Uh, <laughs> Raccoons go to give yeah. it to your brother. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got we got to thank the people flowing out in space. Episode Dixel. I'm not sure if that's the right Roman oh, numeral. We got to no. thank Omega. No, so that's Theron. been that for a long time. <laughs> thank our <laughs> executive producers: Bar Pram, Scott Michaud, Tom Cast, Mike G, Drummer Pebble, Tomaj, Hakim, Dave E. Shep, and Ian, and our little Nicky Kens, Super Desto, Empty, Glora Segral, Blasphemia, and the rest of these guys. All of our sea monsters. Sea monsters. Go, go ahead, Pedro. Renault, Ryder X, back in a trudgy version. New to Justin, Nevin, Darkwing, System, T, Dazzling, Joe, Obi-Wan, and faster. Kyrillo. Uh-huh. And the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, P, Romeo, Marcin, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, K- Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom, Do Not Watch, Stephen, B, Dirty Dean, Back, Gabatron, Dodger, Zethros, Gaming, Rue, Turnover, M, Fox, so Lox, Vine, Oil of Hope, awesome. Shaler, Piper, so small. and Aromatic Dev. Oh, he made it. And, and all of the cheerlings, which are so numerous, to call each and every They're one of you out. They're all truly wonderful, like K.R. Ducky, and Daniel, and Euthanasia. You Graph. are individually <laughs> awesome snowflakes made out of masculine. Like all of our fine, upstanding cannibals, Carl, Mike, our theorem, Linux, New World, Ace, Noctilus, John, Eshep, Gamertron, you know it, DS and Joe, and of course, Aromatic, Dev, and Kai, Yorel. Beautiful people. Son of Jorel. Yes. <laughs> Episode 571 is ready to peace the hell out. Dying to fire until next week, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> I press the buttons and maybe it doesn't crash. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>